All right, man, I'll do the video. <laughs> Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. And I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by, as always. So I figure I kind of break off from tradition. Uh, and I'll get me a classical game. Um, of course, I think all of you guys know Mikhail Tal. Originally from Latvia, played for the Soviet Union um, up until 1992. Because they had the Soviet Union going on. The same thing with Garry Kasparov. This game was actually in 1992. Uh, so at the time, uh, Garry Kasparov was representing Russia. And he was also the world champion at the, at the time. Uh, and uh, Mikhail Tal was representing Latvia. Uh, they played this game uh, about a month before Mikhail Tell died. And it is reported, I'm pretty sure, that he actually snuck out of the hospital. Uh, his health was like really, really bad at this time. Uh, so he snuck out of the hospital uh, to play this tournament. Uh, so, you know, he wasn't feeling very well uh, naturally. Wasn't looking the best. But anyways, uh, yeah, I just figured I'd just, you know, toss this game down. Uh, but I do have all my people in the Philippines. I will say my buhay to you. Uh, King Makai Bigan. Uh, let me see what else do I want to say. Uh, Salamat Posa Na Nuno Inga King my video. Very much appreciated to my people. Inga Lagi. Uh, Pak Body to you. Um, but all of my people that are coming from uh, Latvia, uh, I will say Svieki uh, and Paldias. Uh, hello and thank you for coming by. But if you guys are ready to go, homie, let's take a look and see what we got for this game, son. So we got the movie E4. Best by test, as Fisher would say. We got the move C5, so we, we're getting into the Sicilian defense. We got knight to F3, we got D6, we got bishop to B5, uh, and this is what's known as the canal attack. Like I said, I've never understood why they call it that. Maybe this is kind of like a little canal to the king. That's always my assumption. Uh, and we do see the move at knight to D7. We got D4, we got knight to F6, and we have castles by Tall. So you're probably thinking, all right, hold on, bro. Like, like, didn't I just drop this pawn right here? Because, like, there's not a lot going on in the center of the board, right? Well, the crazy thing is, no, you didn't drop the pawn. If you do want to go into this variation, I would just give you a sample of what could possibly happen. Let's say you say, man, I'm, I'm pawn hungry. I like pawns. I'm going to go ahead and snack on one because I'm hungry. Rook sliding over to E1. And it doesn't seem like it does a whole lot at the, at the moment, but it can get pretty dicey pretty soon. After the knight goes back to f6, we do see pawn taking c5, and this is just clearing more lines, uh, and you cannot take back with the knight because it is pinned to the king at the moment. So you have to take back with the pawn, uh, and then you have the move knight to g5, uh, and you really don't have a great way of defending this pawn. Uh, once this pawn can be taken, bishop can come back here. You got this rook over here. The king is you know, taken out of its little safety net. Uh, so if we did see the move h6, you would see knight takes f7, king taking f7, and bishop to c4. And you guys can see that it's gotten really, really bad. You haven't developed really any of your pieces uh, as black. Uh, you know, white kind of has a little something, something going on. Uh, and uh, so it's getting pretty dicey. You got to go back to e8. And I mean, you're literally stuck in the center of the board. You got queen to d3, maybe coming up to g6 coming up. Don't play this way. And so, uh, you know, Ka Kasparov being the gangster that he is... He does not play that way. Uh, after we see castles, uh, we do see the move a6. You really want to kind of get rid of this bishop. It's a little bit annoying. So the bishop does take on d7 with check. The knight takes on d7. We got knight to c3. So everything is looking like fairly normal now. Everything is, is everything. So we do see the move e6. you got to develop your pieces <laughs> at some point. So that's what Gary's doing. We do see the move bishop g5. We got queen down to c7. And these are all very natural like positions for these pieces. Uh, you know, d6 and e6 is very commonly played in a Sicilian. Uh, you know, you have... Uh, did I miss? No, I did miss. Okay. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, just getting the bishop over here. The queen usually steps over here. You got the, you know, the queen side expansion with a6 and b5. So this is all very common Sicilian type stuff. Uh, we do see the move rook to e1. We got pawn taking d4. Uh, and then we have the novelty of the game, which is knight taking d4. Uh, very, like, you know, usual take back. Uh, so it's kind of interesting in 1992 how this is the novelty. Uh, you know, you can see queen taking d2. Because this knight is over here, uh, it's not as bad of a situation to take uh, with the queen on d4. Simply because you're not going to get attacked by this knight. Uh, but we do see knight taking d4. We got knight up to e5. And the, the thing that I will say about the position, it shows that it's fairly even. So white has like a slight advantage. 
The only problem that I kind of have with that, you know, I'm mad at Stockfish, homie, uh, is the fact that, I mean, White literally has every single one of their pieces out. Uh, the only piece that they have not really moved is the Queen. Uh, but, I mean, they definitely look like they're in a much more commanding position than Black is. You know, Black has all of these pieces uh, that it's really not using at the moment and is not castled. So, it really just seems like White is way ahead of Black, but... I mean, computers like nah, bro. Everything is, <laughs> everything is just, <laughs> just even. Uh, so we do see the move at four, uh, and uh, you know, one of the best retreats when you are attacked is actually not even a retreat at all. It's a counter attack. H six, uh, and this was the top move in the position. Uh, so we do see the bishop going back to h4, uh, and then we have g5, <laughs> and Gary's like, bro, I know I'm not castled, I know I'm not developed, but I'm gonna just uh, attack you with all of my pawns anyway, so I'm pretty gangster, uh, so we do see pawn taking e5, pawn taking h4, pawn taking d6, I mean, you know, you might as well, uh, bishop taking d6, we have actually reached a point in the game, that if you do want to pause the video and see what uh, move Mikhail Tao comes up with in this position. Go ahead and do so. Okay, cool. Uh, so, I mean, if you are thinking that this rook is kind of on this king, but, you know, it's nothing is open in the center, uh, then you might have come up with this move knight to d5. Now, I will say this. You know, Mikhail Tao was known for making, like, crazy sacrifices even bordering on like losing sacrifices, right? Where it's like, why did you make that sacrifice? Of course, with computers that we have nowadays, I mean, you can't really make some of these moves. But back in 1992, this is like way before computers. You know, Kasparov hadn't even lost to, you know, the deep blue and deep thought yet. So, I mean, you know, you can kind of get away with some of these sacrifices. Uh, so we actually see the move knight to d5. So if you guessed knight to d5, congratulations, uh, you did guess the correct move. Uh, that Macau Tao played, but if you guess knight to d5, it would be a losing sacrifice. <laughs> I will say that um, because it is completely defendable if you're black. Uh, we do see pawn taking d5, which is the best move. Pawn taking d5 with check, and it does discover a check along this uh, file with the rook. So you kind of get a little bit of a bang real quick. And after we see the king going over to f8, we do see the queen going to f3. And it is in this position that Gary Kasparov's time actually runs out. <laughs> So he doesn't resign. I mean, black is like 100% winning in like every single possible variation, uh, you know. But like I said, um, I believe that he probably spent so much time on this move trying to make sure that he, you know, played correctly. And this is a blitz tournament. That's the other thing. Uh, so, I mean, you know, they don't start off with like a whole lot, lot of time anyway. You know, blitz is usually, you know, five, you know, seven minutes. Like it's less than that. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of a quick time control. Uh, but like I said, we did get in this position here. Now, for those of you that are wondering, you know, what do you do in this position? Well, number one, you know, white doesn't do anything to protect their pawn here uh, from getting taken with check. Uh, and so that is one of the things. The other thing is, I mean, this square is actually very heavily, uh, you know, defended. Uh, you also don't have your knight to e6 with check, you know, forking the king and the queen uh, because this bishop is here. Uh, black is up an entire piece, so one of their mind frames could be just to start trading down. So bishop to e5 can come, uh, just threatening this knight. Uh, and I mean, if the knight moves somewhere, I mean, you're losing this pawn here on c2. So you don't want to be losing material if you're white. Uh, also, I mean, you know, you have this half open uh, g file. So I mean, you can always move rook over to g8. Uh, uh, you can even go rook to h7 and move rook over to, to, H, uh, uh, to g7. Uh, just adding more protection to this square, but then also, you know, putting a nice little thread down here. Uh, so, I mean, you just really just kind of have like everything going in your favor uh, in this position if you are black. So, it's a guarantee that uh, Gary Kasparov did not resign this position. But anyway, uh, like I said, this was one of the games that uh, that uh, Tall played. Uh, it was like roughly, I think, to the day, a month before he died. So, uh, you know, he was still doing his little gangster stuff. So, you know, he kind of went out with a bang, you know, once world champion versus current world champion. So um, I appreciate you guys very much for coming by. Mermin Salam the King Makai Bigan. And Paldis, if you are coming from Latvia, Spasibo if you're coming from Russia. And I will see you guys next time.